Oh my goodness, Chet. Habbage here, and I am so glad to be back with y'all. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday Labor Day weekend if you're here in the United States. If you're elsewhere in the world, I hope last weekend, the first one in September, was awesome, and that your week is off to a good start. Me, I, uh, I took a little family vacation. It was awesome. And uh, now we're going to get back and see if I can remember how to play this game. I think we are still in the nether, and I didn't just watch the last... In fact, the last video hasn't popped yet. I think it is going... I'd made one carryover for this morning in case I got delayed or anything like that. So I think I have one more going live here, uh, actually at the top of the hour. And then... Um... Uh, Kind of rock and roll. So, as I recall, and you guys can all laugh at me, I think in the la the end of the last episode, we kind of cleared out a central pillar or re remnants of where we had gone further in the tunnel and not quite as far and left kind of a little bit in the middle. So we'd cleared all that up. We've got some junk in our pockets just as a chance to kind of reset, figure out where we're going and what's going on. I'm going to run that back. And uh, empty, empty out what we've got. Check what uh, what is in all the chests and whether we have more TNT or anything. Uh, and then we'll come back. But oh my goodness, guys, I'm so glad to be back with you. I hope you enjoyed. It was awesome seeing that, uh, you know, folks were still dropping in, checking out the videos and uh, leaving comments and stuff uh, while I was gone. That, you know, that... I think makes any content creator feel good when they're uh, when they're away and not actively creating stuff to know that uh, people are still enjoying it, you know, and and it's still there. That that's a pretty cool feeling. So thank you all for that. I really, really did enjoy seeing the morning updates. As you guys may have seen, I, I was trying to hit Twitter. Uh, pretty regularly as we went along. Um, just to, you know, kinda, hey, new videos up, whatever. Uh, we are decently low there. What do we think? Is that going to need replacing? Not sure. I think I want to bring those back. That is our only TNT, so we're not going to have a huge amount to clean up. Um, and we're not cutting tunnels or anything on the way in and out. I think we're good to go. Let's just do this, right? We know we know what we're doing. We're all good. And I got to tell you guys, I am so excited about our, our kind of sidetrack build project. It, uh, <laughs> in my mind, it's ready to go. We are going to uh, hopefully do some amazing things. Um, I, you know, I was uh, back early in the the summer. I'd taken. A very similar trip. Uh, I've got family that lives in the state of Iowa, and so I'd driven out um, back in June, and I got to see a bunch of them at that point, and it was awesome. And uh, this last week, we had a couple of family birthdays, and both my niece and nephew were running in uh, a cross-country meet. They're in middle and high school. Uh, and both my sister and I used to run cross-country when we were in school. So it was, uh, it was pretty sweet. Um, I hadn't. I don't think I'd seen a cross country meet. I mean, I've, you know, like I, I appreciate it when I'm driving around, you know, around home here in the the fall and stuff. Sometimes you'll, you know, like be driving past a park or uh, 
a golf course or something like that, and you'd be like, oh, look, those people are, are in the midst of a cross-country meet. You can tell because there, there's some flags up and a bunch of crowds and, and people wearing similar clothes all running uh, around and uh, through the midst of whatever place you're in. Uh, but I hadn't been in the midst of one, so it was it was kind of fun and always awesome to see your family, you know, doing stuff that they enjoy and are good at. And uh, yeah, had a real real blast doing that. But I also had a secret mission that nobody else knew about, and that was I was checking out farms and silos because we're working on building one. Are they all mad? You guys mad? Just because of a little TNT? Are they going to flank me? Y'all sound kind of mad. you mad? He's coming. Well, if I do... Well, I think we're just going to take care of this. Uh, I think they are mad. That didn't appreciably change them at all, so... Just watch behind, because if something came and knocked us into the horde here, we'd be in trouble. Look, I just took out everybody else. I don't want to necessarily kill everybody. It just seemed like the safest course. For the record, I, I don't think that uh, extermination is ever the safest course, but... Ah, well. Alright, let's see if we can just do this without wasting a potion. Oh. Oh. Huh. Okay. I get him. Hmm. Sound like a pigman now. It's too much pressure. I just got back. I don't know what's happening. Get it? Yes. Yeah, okay, I got my kind of be on our toes here and that that first little horde of pigmen uh, you know not the worst thing to uh, take care of them in a controlled environment when I've been away for a little bit and just want to make sure I survive the encounter Just running away like a coward up there. So what did everybody else do for their uh, unofficial last weekend of summer? Should go to a lake maybe? Do some boating or swimming? I always used to enjoy that. We did, uh, did a nice little cookout one night. Um, had a little, had a little bonfire in one of those, uh, you know, like outdoor fireplace kind of deals, uh, one of the evenings. Awesome weather, by the way. Man, you guys in Iowa, you have it going on when it comes to, uh, the nice weather. At least this week. It was, uh. For anybody who who doesn't know me, hasn't been watching as long, I live in Colorado outside 
outside Denver, Colorado. And we, you know, we are much further south than Iowa, for one thing, and we're in the kind of, you know, high, high arid plains, and we typically do have, you know, hotter, drier summers and stuff like that than, than a lot of places, especially in the Midwest. You guys get the humidity, but we uh, have a little less of all that, but in recent years, particularly this year um, and last year, we just get tons of smoke out of the wildfires, and it's been a like a less extreme heat year. Um, I always say, you know, in in my experience in Colorado, which is 25 years or so, um, you should be prepared for 10 days where it will get below zero a year and 10 days where it will get above 100 degrees a year. And, you know, more or less... Uh, that seems to be a, a week to ten days. You know, it's not always always that much. But, you know, if you kind of like, okay, you're counting down. You're like, hey, we haven't had any below zero days yet, and it's Christmas time. Like, yeah, well, probably going to get colder than in January and February. Um, same goes with summer. You know, it, it, when you, you've had a few days in the 90s, best to remind yourself that, hey, you know, we, we still are due probably a few days up in the hundreds. Well... This year, we really didn't didn't have, I think we had, like, I, I was seeing the weather the other day, and I think they said we'd had like two days in the triple digits. Um, and that, you know, it's more than enough. I, I think most everybody starts feeling, agreeing that 100 degrees is too darn hot. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people have varied sense of, what's a comfortable temperature? A lot of people are like, man, you know, if it could just get into the 90s, I could finally be warm and, and enjoy myself. And other people are like, oh, man, that made it up to 82. I'm, I'm going to melt here. What's going on? I don't want it to be this hot. Um, I, I, particularly if there's not much humidity. I don't mind heat, um, but I, I'm, I'm generally a cooler person cooler weather person um you know i'll take i'll take 70s over 90s uh any day and this past week it was 70s low low to mid 80s every day cool in the in the mornings when you got up and uh just wonderful and then today i came or yesterday i came back across uh, Nebraska to Colorado and it was it was hot and smoky we have all this wildfire smoke and just having been out of it um, for a few days in cool clean fresh air and you know it's it's kind of a laugh I, I give my sister a hard time and all that and you know it, it's it's admittedly, because I grew up in the Midwest, too. I, I know kind of what goes into uh, the agricultural nature of, of that those states. And, you know, it, Colorado, when I, when I say this, know that Colorado is no better. We have massive feedlots, and they are ridiculously stinky places. Um, but I always give my sister a hard time. You know, you, you drive through, and if you catch it on the wrong weekend, when farmers are, are spreading manure in their fields and stuff like that, it can be, it can smell very, very agricultural. Um, but it, it was not. It was just beautiful. Apparently, they'd had some rain before I got out there, so everything was back to green. And uh, a fun fact that I didn't know many people in... in um, more cities may not know this. Soybeans 
actually dry in the fields before they get harvested. And I, you know, I guess like wheat and anything else, I, out here wheat does that too. In the summer, it, or you know, if it could be winter wheat or whatever, but it grows green, kind of looks like a big field of grass. And then right before you harvest, think Minecraft, right? You know, it, it the early stages are kind of greener. Uh, plants, and then when it gets tall into that last one, it turns that l kind of creamy white, whitish brown, and uh, that's when you harvest it. So that's in in real life, that's the field drying out and getting the moisture weight out because you you don't want to harvest a crop and then just have it rot right before you can get it to the people that need it, or you know if it's wheat, millet, or uh, I, I don't know what the processing of green of soybeans would be like do they grind them or, or what is that i don't know but they were beautiful because the, you know the fields were this you know kind of some of them i guess are were further ahead so some were were pretty yellow and others were still fairly green uh but they they were these varied colors and corn too some of it was still very you know green and others of it, others that were further along were starting to to kind of yellow up a little bit more like traditional fall corn that you would expect so it was it was beautiful and you know those landscapes where you're driving by and it, you know if you've if you haven't had the opportunity to take a a road trip through a rolling f rural you know fields and and crops kind of country um man i get out and see it because it's so so beautiful and uh, both times on this trip so the the normal you know kind of everybody takes it route when you're going from denver to anywhere in in iowa really you go out a highway called us 70 or interstate 76 um which is one of the it, it's the major east-west highways uh, that go across the United States in the, uh, you know, from from coast to coast, kind of, are even numbered and uh, increased by tens for the most part. Uh, at least when they laid them all out, that's how they they were. And for me, uh, growing up in the northern Midwest. Um, those highways on the various trips that I think I've ever been on were 70, 80, and 90. Um, and so they roughly, uh, as you go across the plains, correspond to uh, Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. And then there is a, another highway that goes up higher, and that's 94, which goes across North Dakota. And they, you can kind of see they, they split. Uh, and when you get into cities and things like that, they, they kind of split um, into subsets. E either they go around a city or... Um, uh, as 76 does, connect two of the, the bigger longer highways so 76 starts in denver where i-70 goes east west and goes on out to the state of kansas well i live in denver but i didn't want to go to kansas and fortunately for me there's a nice north eastward diagonal highway called i-76 and right about uh Ogallala, Nebraska, it, oh, you got lucky, uh, it joins up with I-80, so it's kind of a shortcut road, and uh, it, taking a combination of I-76 out of Denver, and then I-80 where they connect, you'll get all the way out to Omaha, and then Council Bluffs, Iowa, really nice route, well, I'm, uh, my family's up closer to Sioux City, Iowa, which is uh, kind of right at the corner of Nebraska and South Dakota and Iowa. And I wanted to get up there. And it just so happened I wasn't uh, 
was really thinking of this as I guess everyone in Nebraska was when I made my travel plans. But I was driving out to see my family on last Saturday, the 4th, I think it was. And anybody else realize that I'm kind of lost here? Which direction were we going? And good news is we didn't need much more of our pick, did we? Let's fill this up while we're here, while we're talking. Um... So yeah, I was going through, you know, hey, it's Saturday, I'm not, I woke up super early because I wanted to, see, you know, I didn't want to get in at like 9 o'clock at night, and, and hey, hey, good to see y'all, I'm going to bed. Um, so I, I think I was on the road by just after 5 o'clock in the morning on that Saturday, and, you know, it's kind of cool, early morning, get out of the city without any traffic or anything, and then there was fog out on the the eastern part of Colorado, so every once in a while you get these little pockets of fog. And like, oh my goodness, what's going on? And uh, big old sunrise as I went, and then I got into Nebraska, and I was like, you know, my my radio station I'd been listening to cut out, and uh, I was kind of scanning, and it was like, and here we are with Nebraska Cornhusker pregame show, and I was like, oh, I forgot. And, uh, in case anybody doesn't know, you know, you guys live on the coast or something like that, you don't, or, or out of the United States, um, as, um, I guess stereotypically as any, uh, American state can be about football, Nebraska is about their corn huskers, um. And, and rightfully so, you know, Nebraska's got a long tradition of, of being this, you know, it, it is very much an agricultural state. The city of Omaha is, uh, is the cornerstone of that and has a lot of other industry going on in it. Uh, but the, the state itself, you know, it's when you're listening to the radio, you're getting ag reports, even if you're listening to the top hit station on FM. <laughs> Kind of kidding, but not not as much as I would have thought. Anyway, um, they they love their football, and, and it's you know as universal as any here in Colorado. For one thing, a lot of people have come from somewhere else, so a lot of people have allegiance to to teams wherever they grew up. And in addition to that, we have, I mean. You, you fall down, you land at a different university. We have the University of Colorado, Colorado State, Colorado College, Colorado School of Mines, University of Northern Colorado, Colorado Mesa University, Grand Canyon University. Uh, or no, maybe that one's not there. Uh, but they may have an extension. Um, uh, the Air Force Academy. Did I say Colorado College already? Those are the two in the springs. And then, you know, different campuses of the University of Colorado and so on and so forth. I apologize if I missed your school and it's another smaller one in Colorado. We got a lot. So even here, you know, if you live in a small town in Colorado, especially, you know, in eastern Colorado, which I just drove through in the northeast, you're very likely to be a Colorado State fan or even a UNC fan. Um, you know, that that's where... Maybe a local a local kid went uh, out of high school. You know, they have lots of um, local players, that kind of stuff. Wow, we need a lot of catching back up on this archery stuff. Um, but in Nebraska, there's there are other schools. Uh, Creighton, I think, is the uh, the kind of private school in somewhere in Colorado, um, or Colorado, uh, Nebraska, uh, and then, you know, University of Nebraska at Omaha, I think, oh, what? yeah, I'm glad to have a bit of, remember how to play this game, Tom, which way am I going, where is my exit here, I mean, it's a long street corridor, Shouldn't be that hard. What's out there? Is that a torch? No, it's an Enderman's eyes. Man. I 
be kind of cool if I found some ancient debris as I was running back and forth around here. Ooh, skelly. Uh, I really think this is the wrong way, isn't it? Which way am I going? This is west. We can figure this out. Like, looking at it, that's that's the way we want to go in the in the overworld, as it it connects to the Nether. So this is silly. I should have just thought more carefully and done it. But whatever. We got to chat. So yeah, I uh, I was driving out across Nebraska and it was game day. And if you if you're going on interstates, uh, you know the obvious advantage is you can go really fast and well, really fast. You know, high speed limit. So, on a holiday weekend, I'd already kind of consider not, you know, play it by ear on the interstate. Because if everybody's on road trips, it can be, you know, just like driving in an eight-hour traffic jam. Well, that's no fun. Um, so, I was already weighing my options. But then when I heard, oh, yeah, there's a football game going on in Lincoln, which is... Uh, I don't know exactly how far it is outside of Omaha, but it's you know kind of just down the road. It's similar to uh, the way that Boulder, Colorado, is to Denver. Um, oh, look at him go! Getting a chance. They get each other. <laughs> it's kind of funny. All that was left was a baby pig. <laughs> I think I would rather have that. Don't need any more gold armor. We've got a full set of that. So I ended up, I ended up cutting off uh, a full stop earlier than I, I intended to and driving more state highways than the interstates and it worked out well you know it's, it's pretty um flowers that i was mistakenly calling black-eyed susans um were actually uh, some variety of sunflower i guess uh my sister has a flower garden so when, <laughs> when i was like, she's like no those are black-eyed susans you weren't seeing those along the road I guess that's how the seeds show up or whatever. But anyway, I uh, I had a pre-drive out, and it wasn't too crowded or anything like that. Um, but I ended up going through a bunch of little small towns and stuff. And just beautiful, uh, fun, fun drive across. And then on the way back, I, it had gone so well. I was like, I'm going to look for, for other options and just try, you know, Try to find something I've never done before um, uh, when I'm going in and coming back. Uh, see what... It's good, right? Well, 
I went on roads. I, you know, I, I don't know if anybody normally <laughs> intentionally goes on. They were uh, somewhere small, and uh, you know, for like a little stretch, there was just this. You know, I wasn't even sure if it was like oiled gravel kind of stuff where they'll like pour in a, a resin or, or just a new a new asphalt that was you know, it kind of looked like wet dirt but it, it was much more grippy you weren't sliding around or anything like that there's no traffic hardly any i i saw and this was what yesterday was a wednesday so i you know not much traffic um i think i stopped at one one construction deal that was just some flag guys working on a bridge and had it down to single lane so I could like see the you know the far side to waited for two cars and then he waved me through and I was like all right I'm off um, I think we should just go let's gather all these up and get back home um, we got plenty of room let's get the bow ready. So yeah, I, you know, tiny little small towns and two lane roads. But I, you know, I, I traveled 250 miles, if not more. I, I don't know exactly because you know, in, in I think I used Google Maps for that particular one. But you know, sometimes I use Waze. Um, but for that, it was uh, it's Google Maps because that tells you how many miles you know you have left for each segment and the whole trip. Uh, so I was you know, just kind of watching as I went, but it was like, you know, drive a hundred miles on this road till this, you know, whatever it is, or drive 10 miles. Uh, and so you kind of just do a zigzag, uh, but you know, you end up two thirds of the way across the state when you have, and you, you feel like you've seen more than when you're just on an interstate and all you see are semis and campers and, uh, you know, exits with the same gas stations every time. So it was cool. It was really fun. But then I got back to the interstate at North Platte, Nebraska, which is kind of the first big city or big town um, before you get into Colorado. And I tell you what, I was so glad I hadn't taken the interstate back um, because it was just miserable traffic. There were tons of trucks and there were you know people that would would just hang out in the left lane my you know driving their own sweet time and they get stuck beside trucks and you can tell the truckers aren't happy like they they want to be able to move at their own pace and so it changes their momentum and their gas efficiency and all that and for the rest of us you know, it just makes it so that you can't can't get around so i i appreciated having not been in that mess uh, driving on my own all right let's put you back let's pull you out so I can put these potions away now I uh, think the plan had been I'm gonna put this right here this is all netherrack we'll just take it downstairs um, the plan had been that once we were done out there, the clay that we'd previously gathered would be cooking, right? And, okay, we only have the two now, so let's split there and there. I don't care about wasting a little bit of coal to get those done. Let's pull a bunch of these back and take them downstairs. Uh, let me take that sword down. Let's leave those downstairs. Uh, when these ancient debris get done, we can cook the... Oh, wait, that was probably the worst, because we still have stuff that may want to stay up here. Yes. Yeah, this, that, that, uh, maybe that, although we don't really care about this anymore, do we? Those, that, I think 
everything else can go down. Um, honestly, let's take those downstairs too. Free up a little bit of this space. Oh, uh, anything else need to go down. How we doing on these? Halfway. Alright, now let's take this box. Run back downstairs and then come back up because I want to get that gold swapped for the ancient debris. Uh, as usual, I don't have any idea how much time we've been doing. Those are the kind of veteran. I mean, honestly, I don't. I haven't even checked. I should be. Looks like my mic is working. It looks like we don't have a slide in front of our faces, which is likely because. Uh, I haven't thanked you guys yet for hanging out, so what about it? Um, blue box. No, um, that just we'll do those, but it doesn't make sense to sort them or try to process the bulk stuff when we have all this junk. In our pockets. There's that. There are those. Uh, go upstairs. Lava, lava, lava. Uh, did I make a leather? Yeah, I do have a leather box down here. Cooked food. Just the blocks. There we go. Come on, run. Shake a leg. Gravel. Blackstone here. Alright, then let's get rid of these tools. Back upstairs where hopefully all our netherrack will be cooked. Um, so on the... Oh, we... Uh, uh, before we do anything else, get you up. Gold. Craft them. Well, that's perfect amount. All right, so seven items. Uh, <laughs> let's think here, because I don't remember what what we said were our priorities in the past. I don't want to rush just coming back. Let's put this extra food away. Oh, you know what I didn't do? Hang on. We are at 38 to 39 minutes. Perfect. So. Alright, these are going to go downstairs. Is that ever? Oh, yeah, the other clutter's in my. Right there. Let's pick this up. Or not, because I don't have a pick handy. So yeah, getting back to the interstate was just a a tough run uh, until 76 split back off from 80, and then it opened up. It was awesome. Um, although I gotta say, you know, I, I'm a proud citizen of Colorado, and uh, I think I'm very blessed to live in this state. Oh, man, do we not take care of 76. It is just garbagey. <laughs> it is so... It's like the, the kind of concrete 
but it between semi I guess in winter you know semis and all that have chains on uh, for the ice but whatever the reason um, they make that road the most miserable ride it feels like your whole car is going to fall apart um, but for all that there's no traffic so you can uh, you can zip right along um, I'm going to have to remember to come get all these boxes I have scattered all over to make that easier let's put this one over here I like opening my inventory and seeing that I have all that nether rack right there waiting. Alright, then just these few little odds and ends. We got some quartz. Which, oh, by the way, I'm so... What did we do with all that other quartz? Do we already use it? Do we move it somewhere? Hmm. That could be a trick. That's always, you know, you, you don't think about, obviously, what's going to what you're going to forget about when you when you leave a game like this for a while. But it's just all those things where it's like, oh yeah, I'm just going to make a pile of this here. It'll be right there and obvious when I get back to it or when I, you know, I'm not ready for the next step of this project. And then you uh, don't think about it for a while and it just kind of disappears on you. Okay, so we've got some clay brick. Do we we did put quartz blocks in there. We're going to have a bunch more, but let's go uh, do up our tools here. So, we have our two good swords already covered. I want to get the second uh, f yeah, second shovel. Are these oh, that's a fortune shovel. I don't care about that as much. I do care about second shovel axe just to have all my axes done of the uh, all my silk touch tools that I'm using all the time and then two three um maybe we want this because for the clay when we were doing it it doesn't get xp like the the fortune pick the reason i don't worry about it too much is we're constantly getting xp back as we we use it right so no need to to have a lot of durability or repair and and maybe we'll do the fortune axe again i still don't know but i think maybe like oak trees you get more apples or sticks or something i don't know but it's either that or make another another silk touch something or other but honestly i, I think at this stage of the game um by the time we get through four picks worth of durability we've we've gone pretty long so let's uh let's do up these seven items everybody think that's good good i knew you would you guys are great like that. All right. Load up. Uh, what do we say our priorities were? The shovel. I mean, does it matter? Probably not. We can count. 
Why did that one sound so weird? I don't get the difference in... Maybe it's just random. Alright, look at that. We have a full toolkit. I hope I didn't... Yeah, I didn't miss anything on my... Okay. So... Count them four picks. We're going to grab a fortune out because we want to do all our, our repairs on these couple. Um, this is our fortune axe, which we don't need. And then these will be our, our everyday tools when we get them all cleaned back up again. All right. Let's uh, just make sure... Well, that's good. Let's head back downstairs and do some quartz repairing. And again, this is kind of double bonus stuff, or endless bonus. We want to get the quartz for the quartz blocks, which we're going to use in our build. We want uh, the XP to uh, repair our tools, obviously enough. But it's also keeping us close by here so that all of this clay can keep cooking. Lots and lots and lots of uh, efficiency going on. And, and making sure that while we're working, we're working smart. Getting lots of things done. Uh, even that we're not working on directly while we're here. So yeah, we we talked about the trip and the drive, and it was awesome and beautiful the whole whole time. Uh, not a drop of rain, um, you know, perfectly moderate temperatures the whole time. Just amazing. And then I came back home, uh, like hit Denver at rush hour, and there was a Rockies baseball game that was just getting out. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? And the worst part was, you know, I. I Aside from a weekend in Dallas where it was so hot that coming back actually felt kind of like a relief. I've been here the whole time, so I don't know if it's constantly been like this or if to yesterday was just particularly bad. But driving back in and not being able to see anything because of the smoke and then having it. And it was 10 to 15 degrees warmer here uh, than it had been and what I was driving through. So it was hot and smoky and just kind of like, oh, what am I back into? <laughs> this is awful. Uh, so that was a little, a little tough. And I like, you know, you, at least for me, when I, when I come back to a place and I've been away, you know, it, it feels like, oh, I want to, I want to open the windows and, you know, just circulate the air, get everything fresh. But you couldn't because it was so smoky outside that, uh, you know, you'd just be letting even more of that in. But I changed my furnace filter and ran that uh, not the furnace but uh, uh, the AC was on it running on but I just turned on the fan and, and blew stuff through the filter but it uh, that's pretty limited you know it, you should always change your furnace filters anyway because you don't want to just have the the collected gunk um scenting, I guess, all the the air that you're going to put into your home, but it's uh, about the best you got when it's, it's smoky air outside and just turning stuff over when you get back. But it was, it was an awesome trip. Anyway, my secret mission was looking at all these, uh, you know, all the different styles and types of farms and barns and um, silos in particular, because that's what we've started building on. And I was very happy to see that, um, yeah, it, it's totally a thing to have uh, still a, a red barn uh, with white trim. And a lot of them even have, you know, nowadays they're, they're metal white roofs. Um, but even have the full white roof and uh, trim and all that. So I got snapped a few pictures on my phone, got loads of ideas, um, a sense on, on some of those traditional style silos, how how heights are, and some of them are, are amazingly tall. And 
uh, you know, even when I was, I was kind of reining it back in for the height, uh, when we were setting the scaffolding, I was like, oh, that might be too tall. Um, you know, they, you'll have a tall, like a three story barn and then the silo will be twice as high as that, if not more. So they, they really do go up a long ways and, um, just you know all the all the kind of types of outbuildings and stuff around and um, what we might do is we kind of transform things for animals and, and, and everything else around so I think we'll have a lot of fun uh, kind of building up our our little farm around here oh I didn't even notice that we already completed our pick here so busy talking about the envisioning of the glory of our silos. And one thing that I did notice was, you know, we talked about it a little bit with the brick and the... on the silos, and... Um, then should we use that on the barn or not, or, you know, how does that work? And... and by and large, yes, even, you know, even with bright paint and siding and all that kind of stuff, it appears that, you know, for a lot of the big type barns, that that lowest area is brick. You know, they have a, they're big buildings, they have a, a solid foundation, and sometimes those will go up a little bit. But I'm kind of thinking I'd like to do um, the brick to start and then the try the acacia wood for... Uh, the walls and stuff with the uh, the quartz as our trim. All right, just one more of these to go. Oh, there's a slime. At least we didn't have to go uh, fight Endermen or Creepers or wait on any of them. We just got things done here. And hopefully we'll have a lot of clay bricks left when we're done. Where'd he go? <laughs> what just happened? I turned my back for one second and the slime is gone. Okay. And I, I was thinking, you know, I, I don't know if there's ever been a stated intent to do so but it would be kind of cool if at some point they updated the color palettes to where you could effectively die but you know in a game sense paint wood right so you you know you get your oak planks and then you cover them with dye and you'd have painted wood because I'd, I'd love to have like you know a true red wood and I'm a little worried that the the acacia may not look quite as clean as I'm hoping for um, oh, this is going to work out perfect i got about four minutes left Four or five. That should give us just enough time to make more bricks. And then fill up that chest. Yeah. 
And that really isn't going to go super far yet, is it? Well, we'll keep, uh, keep plugging away. Let's get that. Let's finish putting our chests away. Our tools. Bloop. You go there. You are the fortune shovel. So you go there. We've now got a nice set of tools. We have a big old supply of steak. Plenty of torches. Cobble and glass. These are our nether pathway building supplies. Uh, all those. Animal box. I'd forgotten that we'd set that up. Ooh. Uh, let's put you back in our pocket here so we don't have another oopsies. Ooh, we are. Let's go put that away too if we have time. There's always something to make it a rush at the end, right? Okay. Diorite, stone, cobble, glass. Those are the, the nethers. All the rockets and the wings. All the consumables. All the animal stuff. This is uh, back to being a good storage box. That can go in there. That goes there. This we need to empty. What, uh... Oh, and we have the perp the purple box would normally go down there, and that's what we have all the the build stuff going into, and we left it sitting down there. All right, I know where all my chests are. Yay! It's a miracle. So in the next, I think we'll we'll go ahead and add more to our silo with whatever we we have, but I I don't think that's going to take a ton of time. I think we'll be done pretty quick. So I will uh, try to come up with fun activities for us to do in the meantime. Uh, but I think at least for the time being, that's going to kind of be it. We're going to run back upstairs and wrap up. I got to go to the grocery store guys it's uh it's pretty critical when i got home i had planned to do it last night when i got home i um uh, with the smoke and everything i was just like no i'm not gonna do it and i ended up ordering a pizza it was pretty good but uh doesn't uh go along so i gotta be i gotta Got to be a real person and get, get settled back into home. I got stuff I haven't even unpacked yet. So um, I don't know if I'll, I'll have additional episodes up today. As some of you guys may be aware for the U.S., it's the first day of, uh, of NFL football. So I may may hang out with some friends and watch, watch a little bit of that or something, just catch up after having been away for a week or so. And, um, yeah, we'll... Uh, We'll definitely be back. So I, I certainly may be back for more uh, this afternoon. May have more episodes coming up. Saturday is going to be a tough day for me. And that's, you know, I got tomorrow in there. But uh, Saturday I will be uh, I'm going to a football game, which is early in the day. And I don't know if I'll make it back in time to record any episodes. So I will probably have uh, one that I keep uh, saved and ready to go for you guys from tomorrow's recording. So, you know, it while they'll be much more current, it won't just be stuff that I've recorded a week in advance and, and kind of left out there. Uh, probably uh, tomorrow I'll do a few episodes and, and save a couple of them, put them up on Saturday as well. And then from there, Sunday on, we're, we're back to good. So um, you guys have an awesome uh, rest of your day. I will see you when I see you. And honestly, I don't know when that will be. So uh, make the most of it. Keep uh, 
keep on your toes and uh, watch that Twitter or subscribe so that you can see when my latest videos go live. And uh, yeah, I, I am thrilled to be back and can't wait to get more of those up. So we will see you all in a bit. Oh, I didn't, I didn't, uh, what do we need to do that? And that, and we're right at an hour, a couple seconds over. You guys rock. Take care of yourselves. Get up, walk around. I am going to do that before it gets too smoky as well. Uh, get outside and enjoy it before it's cool. I had my, ooh, ah, so, so much to say. Last night when I came home, I was, uh, it, when it finally cooled off and I was going outside to see how smoky it was to see if I could open my windows overnight. There was a skunk across the little drive at, at another dumpster walking around. That was like, ooh, but I still opened my window anyway an hour later. Um, also, uh, I just migrated my Mojang account to Microsoft. I don't know how many of you guys have already done that or if you're waiting. It's a little painful, but uh, I got it. You know, you'd think, hey, we're Microsoft. We can make this, you know, we can do anything. <laughs> we have the power. But it was weird. It was like... You know, you had to go through, and some of it was really easy. I already had a Microsoft account. I had a Mojang account. You know, like, okay, these are going to go together. And I'm used to two-factor authentication, do all that. So I, I had to set up the Microsoft Authenticator app. Okay. Um, and then I had to, uh, like, okay, now we need to associate that to your Xbox Live profile, which I hadn't ever had and didn't, you know, okay, whatever, that's that's their deal. You know, somebody gets a, a bonus for having uh, the additional 2 million Mojang Microsoft or Minecraft accounts show up as part of the Xbox community now, I'm sure. Whatever the case. Um, I said all that. I, well, I, I clicked the next button to do that, and my browser page just went pure white, like no message, nothing, what's going on. I had to completely close out twice and relaunch before I would finally get into that. And then um, once I'd finally on like, you know, I, I was like, I use uh, Firefox and I was like, well, maybe it's a Microsoft. We, we only, so I did it all through Edge. I, it, that didn't seem to initially fix it, um, but finally got through all that and got it up and then I go back and it's like it pops up the login I type in my new stuff and it's like no that isn't it because you had to then without any prompting know to go back and close out of your account that you just migrated so that it could figure out or you know then you could log back in with your Microsoft account by you know selecting it from a list it was like just automate that Microsoft you guys you know you guys are the the <laughs> the awesome developers let's get this done but uh anyway I, let me know if you guys have already been through that process or if you're still seeing the splash screen occasionally at the uh the microsoft launcher i'm curious they said they'd started doing some in july so obviously i wasn't the first wave but uh it's good to have it done uh I, hopefully now we'll not have those little pop-ups anymore anyway now i've talked too long but uh you guys rock and we will uh, see you back here for the next one bye until then